this can't, this is not, this is the type of it. Obviously, it's going to be, it's going to go to the thumb, so it's going to be the first of that carbon. I don't know if that's the way that is in the notes. Yeah. Okay, so make sure you change that. So obviously, this is the fifth metacarpal. It's going to be the first. So the base of the first metacarpal, and then the trapezius, which is one of the carpal bones here. So then what action is going to do is to abduct the thumb and extend the thumb and abduct the wrist. So this is, this is um, abduction of the thumb here. This is flexion, or this is opposition. This is flexion and extension, and then this is going to be abduction. So it's pulling across like this. Abduction is moving towards the midline of the body, but it's just, instead of like abduction is usually like this, right? Abduction, and then this is abduction. Abduction to the body, towards the body. Yeah, abduction is like this, and then abduction is like that. Right. So in this case, it's abduction, it's moving away. This is abduction because it's moving towards the palm. This is abduction, it's moving away. Right, so here, this is adduction, and this is abduction. So then, abduct the paw as long as it's pulling up this way. Right. And you have extensor pollicus, longus, and brevis. So that's going to be back on the back side here. So this would be flexion of the thumb, this would be extension. So let's pull them back like that. So then origin, again, is going to be a little bit more down towards the bottom here, and it's coming across. So it's coming from the ulnar, and those are the ones coming across here. Okay. So then the, uh, the proximal extensor pollicis brevis is going to go to the proximal phalanges or phalanx, and then the longus is going to go to the distal phalanx. Okay, so extensor pollicis longus and brevis is going to do this action back here. And so then that leaves the extensor indicus, which is going to go to the index finger, and that's going to be a little bit farther distal down the forearm. Again, it's coming from the ulnar over here, going across like that. So it's going to be this tendon here. All right, so now just to summarize, we're talking about now here, just remember this is the arm, and then this is the forearm. So what you're looking at here is a slice through the arm. Right. And then this being the anterior, so it's just up here looking down like this. So the anterior, more superficially, we have what muscle is this here? Biceps. Going to be the biceps. And then underneath that, we have the brachialis. And it's down deeper here. Right. And then on the back side, there's only one muscle back here. It's going to be the triceps. So now we get into the forearm. So here we're looking at the extensor muscles and then the flexor muscles here. And so here's the two bones here, and then like I say, there's the interosseous membrane. So you have basically the extensor compartment and then the flexor compartment here. And so again, the anterior is going to do flexion of the wrist and flexion of the fingers and the thumb. And then posterior compartment is going to do extension of the wrist and extension of the fingers. So now we're getting into muscles that are in the actual hand and palm itself. 
Okay. Most of the time you're going to be dealing more with, with these muscles. These are the ones that are going to be more important for you to know. Okay? Because you're talking about you're talking about palpation landmarks, you're talking about point location, you're usually talking about these different tendons that cross the ribs. You know, a lot of times because you can have uh, just the lung, right? So you can have a lot of points here around the wrist. So you're looking at this anatomical snuff box, and these tendons are here. The intrinsic muscles of the hand, I mean, we're going to go over them, but they're not going to be as significant as the other muscles of the forearm. Right? There's things about, like when you talk about, we're talking about carpal tunnel syndrome, if somebody has a nerve entrapment syndrome that goes on long enough, you can get atrophy of the muscles. So, so you call this a thenar area, and then this is hypothenal. So you're talking about thenar atrophy, okay, or hypothenal. Okay. And then a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of people that do a lot of body work, muscle work kind of things, they're going to have pretty strong thenar pads, right? I, mean, I do a lot of work with my hands, so I get pretty strong thenar muscles. Okay. So these muscles of the hand are going to be ones that obviously you can feel the bellies of the muscles here. So where are there more muscles on the palm of your hand or on the dorsal of your hand? Yeah, so you have a lot more on this side here. And then obviously fine control of the fingers is important for writing or doing all kinds of manipulation and doing things with the fingers. So there's a lot of uh, fine control. So you need a lot of extra muscles that are going to move specifically the muscles, of, I mean the bones of the fingers. So the, the muscles of the fingers for that do abduction and adduction are mostly going to be in, found in the, in the palm and the hand. I mean, you can move the thumb from the muscles that come across here, but abduction and adduction of the fingers is going to be actually within the palm itself. So then flexion is going to be for the, the thumb immediately across the palm, like this, and then fingers flexion is going to be moving like this. Right? And then extensions, the thumb is going to move out laterally, and then extension of the fingers is going to move back like that. So again, there's going to be muscles, intrinsic muscles of the hand. There's three different groups. There's the thenar pad, and then there's the, the mid-palm muscles that are going to be in between the metacarpals, and then you're going to have the uh, interossei. Okay. So you have the flexor, this is one that's crossing the wrist. You have the flexor pollicis longus. That's going to be on the medial. Again, there's a little bit of discrepancy between what's, what has in the broken in the picture here. But the idea is it's going to come across from the forearm and go into the thumb and the distal part. But you, so now we're talking about more of the intrinsic muscles of the hand. So you can have flexor pollicis brevis, which is going to be this one right here. And then you can have abductor pollicis. So again, abduction is moving away from the palm. So then the abductor is here, and then the flexor is going to be over here. So the flexor is a little bit more medial. And then opponent's pollicis brevis. Got this area here. So it's coming at the flexor retinaculum. So remember the retinaculum was that membrane that goes across the front part of the wrist. So that's going to pull this out like this. All right. And then the insertion is the anterior side of the first metacarpal. So it's pulling out like this. Okay. 